San Andreas. For a lot of people, San Andreas is the best game in the series. Hillary Clinton is not one of those people. She probably got stuck on the flight school missions. This game starts off very strong. CJ's return encourages the other characters to explain the current situation to him, but really what they're doing is talking to the player and giving exposition to the player. Now the player understands the situation. It's something I think is really clever. It's not unique to San Andreas. Saints Row 2 did this, GTA 4 did this even, but it's something I'm a big fan of because it's like the perfect opening for a game. It's also a fantastic excuse to start your character from zero. At the start of the game, CJ has that XQC skeletal build. CJ looks like he just got out of fucking our switch. <laughs> when I got to the driving school, there was a lady there that you can date, and I tried to date her, but she said I was too skinny. So I went to um, Clock and Bell or something, and I ate eight family-sized Happy Meals, and I left fat as fuck. And so I waddled back to her, and but she still wouldn't date me because she thought I needed cooler clothes. So I went and bought a bunch of expensive clothes. I then got an expensive haircut. I come back to her. She still wouldn't date me. So I respected her decision and I walked away. But then what happened next was I had this new CJ, this fashionable large CJ, but he was just ruining all my cutscenes. I just couldn't take him seriously. There was this cutscene where he's like trying to intimidate Jizzy and he's like holding a gun up and I was like, I just can't take this guy seriously. If that was me, if I was Jizzy in that situation, I'd be laughing at the guy so much he would just shoot me. I got a bit sidetracked there. Point is, you start off and you're very skinny, you're at square zero. You have no respect whatsoever from your gang members. They all treat you like shit and CJ is desperate to prove himself. Let's go, bitch. Something very impressive about this game is it managed to maintain a very serious story while having absolutely insane mental gameplay without ruining the feel of the game. For an example, think about how weird it would be if Nico Bellic had a jetpack. I would hate it. But somehow in San Andreas, it manages to not feel out of place. It's a lot like Saints Row 2, where it balances silly and serious very well. I still think Saints Row 2 did it a bit better, but it's very good in this game too. The story is similar to GTA 4, where it starts off incredibly strong, then you just kind of go around fucking around just doing missions for any old fucker who wants something done, and then it ends quite strong again. It picks up on what it started with. It was surprisingly emotional actually. I don't know if that was just me. But in order to fully understand it, you have to go online and watch the introduction video. There's a mission and CJ will go, the green saber, like it's meant to mean some shit. But because I hadn't watched the introduction, I was just sat there like, uh, the what mate? It kind of cheapens what should have been a huge moment in my opinion. The green saber is mentioned once, very briefly in game by Ryder for some fucking reason, snitching on himself. But most, I feel like most players would have forgotten by this point. Needing to consult the 240p ancient archives for crucial story information, that's not ideal. <laughs> but you still know more or less what's happening, it's not really a big deal. In Vice City, your biggest enemy was anything to do with water. In San Andreas, your biggest enemy is flying. Anything to do with flying or planes, and there's a 50% chance that the game's gonna be on it's bullshit again. Games used to be much harder back then. If you ask people what was the hardest mission in GTA 5, they don't really have an answer. It was kind of an easy game. But if you ask people what was the hardest mission in San Andreas, they have quite a few fucking answers. Thanks to the fog and the clever map design, the world of San Andreas just feels fucking colossal. It's actually not even half the size of GTA 5, but somehow it just feels so much bigger. Travelling from Los Santos to San Fierro, this feels like the biggest distance ever. But it's not really that big, it's just that in order to travel there, there's no straight lines. You have to go through all the countryside, or go through this roundabout highway, and so it ends up taking a long time, so the distance feels absolutely colossal. How the fuck does one shitty little lamp fuck up my whole life that mad? As far as the gameplay, if you enjoy GTA 3 or Vice City, you will enjoy this game. It's that typical insane, unpredictable gameplay these GTAs are known for, but the missions are mostly designed to have a unique aspect to each of them. One minute you're in a combine harvester, then you're sneaking onto a boat with nothing but a knife. Some missions you're just taking pictures or going on dates, but even those, even those missions are actually kind of memorable. They have a harvester and I need one. Get it, then you can pay me. Namaste, Carl. The fuck that mean? Later, freak. <laughs> 
GTA 3, Vice City, and San Andreas all released within a three year window. That's only one year per game. That is fucking insane. It's genuinely mind blowing just how much each iteration improved on the last. GTA 3 didn't even have a fucking map. I'd be trying to get back to my safe house during a mission and I just, I you couldn't fucking find it. Oh, I need a pain spray. Can't fucking find it. I need to buy some guns. Can't fucking find them. I don't know what kind of horrible, terrible, sweatshop conditions they were forced to make these games in, but I say get them back in there because this era of GTA games really was fantastic.